This was the Cathedral of St. Lambertus. It stood for centuries as a designated heritage monument, but that was until 2018, when German bulldozers demolished it to expand the Gartweiler surface mine. So this is what it looks like now. Pretty, right? Now, this wasn't a one-off situation or anything, but has happened many times before. It's become one of the most serious issues for many people of West Germany, who have to live through such decisions that contradict the global vision of Germany as a leading country in environmentally friendly initiatives. Despite the global rise of implementing clean and sustainable energies, coal is a fundamental element for electricity generation in Germany, being the largest source of fossil fuel energy used to generate the country's electricity by 2022. As for the most common type of coal used, that would be lignite, a coal mineral of which Germany ranks third in the world in terms of reserves, giving it a comparative advantage over other countries. But the thing is, this advantage isn't even much of an advantage. In fact, having this much lignite available is a bad thing, given how tempting it is to use. You see, lignite is literally the worst possible coal there is. Like, the worst. It's the most polluting and harmful form of coal. Not to mention, if you look at this graph here, it's worse than all other oil, gas, and coal in terms of sustainability. But it's very low cost and reliable, hence that evil temptation. However, despite this aspect, these last few years have been very controversial, as there is a struggle between the desire to eliminate fossil fuels and their polluting effects, and the reality in which coal continues to have a great predominance in supplying the energy demands of the population. And these demands are being paid for by the Germans themselves, as this reality has impacted villages such as the pastoral village of Lutzerath in West Germany, which is experiencing a confrontation over the German government's plans to demolish the village to make way for a surface coal mine. The practice of surface and open cast mining poses a threat to this village, and to many like it, since it removes everything that exists on the surface in order to proceed with the extraction, being the mechanism used by the Germans to extract lignite. Lignite mining practices have caused the destruction of 313 villages since 1924, causing at least 60,000 people to leave their villages and move elsewhere. Currently, the company that has the leading role in the expansion of this trend is Bear with me as I will probably say this wrong. Rheinisch Westfalisches Elektricitätswerk, but easily abbreviated as RWE, which has become one of the few multinational companies that dominate the energy landscape in much of Europe. Their movements have caused a constant confrontation with activists who have protested for the protection of these towns and changes to the existing laws on mining and climate change. Because weirdly, there is a strong contradiction of the laws in this matter. Despite the fact that in 2020, a law was passed that set a plan for the elimination of coal as a source of energy by 2038, it's still largely ignored, due to an outdated mining law still in practice that says lignite mining to supply coal power plants is in the public interest even though we know it obviously isn't. But due to this law, a company can take private land for its lignite mine expansion after offering residents compensation for their homes. And many affected have said that the compensation offered for their property isn't enough to buy something equivalent. So these deals aren't always fair. Landowners can fight the seizing of their property only after mining operations have begun, leaving them little chance at any success. Keep in mind though, the power and influence of the RWE cannot be underplayed, and they most likely have a hand in government decisions that decide this. Not even villages created centuries ago are spared by the energy demands of Germany. Take for instance the Kerpen Mannheim village, located in the southeast of North Rhine-Westphalia. It was 1000 years old, and was resigned to the same fate as many others, such as the neighboring village of Morschenich. They were both demolished to make way for the Hambach mine, which is extremely important for energy production in Germany. Not only that, but farmlands and forests aren't safe either. Look at the ancient Hambach forest for example. In 1978, when the RWE first acquired the land, the forest covered 13,600 acres, which is close to the size of Manhattan. Today, you can see that roughly 10% of the forest remains, with 90% having been cut down and mined. In fact, the only reason it's not all gone is due to massive protests and occupations by environmentalists forcing the government to preserve what little remains. But even then, every year RWE strips away a bit more of the edge of the forest to expand the open pit lignite mine from which it extracts an average of almost 50 million tons of coal each year. This mine occupies an area equivalent to half the size of Washington DC, and is considered one of the, if not the, largest artificial pit in Europe, while also being 500 meters deep. And it only keeps growing. Nothing in its path is really respected either, as I've said before. Regardless if there's culturally significant landmarks, farmlands, roads, nature, or even cemeteries, 
Cranes and bulldozers will arrive, enter the towns they've decided to demolish, and raise everything in their path, allowing open pit mines to be expanded to obtain the harmful lignite. So how do you deal with this mining practice? Because before you know it, Germany might just end up as one big coal mine. Just kidding, but still. Well, the first thing to do is obviously find a replacement for this energy source, which, as you can see here, generated about 28% of Germany's electricity and was the largest source of electricity in 2021. Now, nuclear energy isn't an option anymore, obviously, because, you know, Germany basically closed all their nuclear plants due to poor maintenance and their deep fear of nuclear energy due to Chernobyl and Fukushima, which was stoked on by politicians and the, uh... But to be fair, there's still no permanent storage place for nuclear waste, which is a huge problem. And then there's wind power, which Germany sort of has a love-hate relationship with. On one hand, Germany is going to dedicate 2% of its land to wind power development, and many are happy about it. But on the other hand, it is way harder to build a wind farm than it is to literally tear down a village for coal. This is of course due to bureaucracy, and possibly the RWE lurking in the shadows, as well as local residents literally hating the idea of wind turbines being close to them. I mean, at one point, the German government was seriously considering the idea of a nationwide 1,000 meter distance rule between wind farms and residential buildings, but it was dropped with a maximum distance of 1,000 meters instead. But the thing is, something has to happen. Currently, just about 41% of Germany's power mix consists of clean energy, and they aim for it to be 80% by 2030. That's extremely ambitious. The original target was only 65% a few months earlier, but the Russian invasion of Ukraine added a sense of urgency, given it exposed how reliant Germany is on imported fossil fuels from Russia. Not to mention that there's another new target to achieve almost 100% renewable energy by 2035 instead of by 2040. So, for Germany, some big decisions have to be made, and hopefully stuck to as well. But this doesn't address the problem of what to do when all these coal mines are basically abandoned. I mean, just from lignite mining alone, 450,000 acres of German countryside have been essentially permanently altered. So, what do you do with this? Well, after the coal is gone, the soil is backfilled and replanted, but the landscape is ruined and unrecoverable. Something that has been done before is turning them into lakes. Take a look at the Giseltalsi Lake, located in Saxony-Anhalt. Now, this isn't a natural lake. In fact, it was only created in 2011 by flooding a former open-cast lignite mine in the Geisel Valley. The process of filling it began in 2003, taking 8 years and 423 million cubic meters of water to completely fill the lake. It's now the largest artificial lake by area in Germany, at 4,700 acres. Now, this isn't a bad solution for the problem, but the thing is, when you have something like the Hambach surface mine, which is 5 times the size of the lake and 4 times deeper, it just isn't really possible. I mean, when we're talking decades of flooding and an unimaginable amount of water, there needs to be another solution. If you look at the United States and South Korea, their solution to this problem is building huge solar farms over the former mines. In fact, the largest solar farms in both Kentucky and West Virginia will sit on abandoned mines, and this trend is only growing. This is a potential solution for huge mines such as the Humbach surface mine and the Gartsweiler surface mine, and it's actually been talked about before in regard to these mines. There's also the issue of workers, giving there's currently 9,000 employees in coal mining that depend on it for their livelihood. But this shouldn't be much of a problem, given Germany currently has the largest renewable energy workforce in Europe, with almost 300,000 employees. And to reach their 2030 and 2035 targets, they'll definitely need a lot more. Regardless, Germany's addiction to coal cannot be understated. Things will not be easy for them in terms of making the full green transition. Lobbying is a major problem, and companies like the RWE are a major battle. But if Germany wants to live up to being a leader in clean energy, like they claim they are, then a lot of tough and ethical decisions have to be made. But the question is, will they?